Quentin, I'd like to slap you in the face with an uncomfortable fact today. Give it to me hard and fast like a bad sandwich. Did you just... Most of the games I play most often these days are small games. I want to play big games. I want to show Gloomhaven to everybody I know, man, woman and child, no exceptions. But realistically, I've only got time to show people little games, things like The Mind or Skull. I know exactly what you mean. I want to play Twilight Imperium, but instead I end up arguing with my wife or just staring in silence. That's not what I, exactly, were you listening to what I said? Not hugely. Champions of the Wild is another of these little games, these tiny games that we can fit into a sociable evening, a train ride and a collaborative bath. What we've got here is a party game about animals, idiotic debating, and being frankly awestruck about how little your friend Sarah knows about snakes. No, they don't carry things around in their pouch. Well, that's... Ca what? Inside the box, you get a set of voting tokens in eight player colors, a beautifully illustrated deck of animals, and a deck of 60 events featuring our favorite illustrations of any game released this year, except for maybe Root. A wasp in a hot dog eating contest. A blue whale doing a slip and slide. To say this is the stuff of dreams are made of would be unfair, as dreams are rarely this good. I had a dream once where, where it wasn't an alligator exactly. Nobody cares about your dreams. But I'm concerned. A lot of the party games that we love are powered by a pure chortle core of comedy energy. We think it's fun to have a laugh with our friends. But this looks like a game about zoology. Well, don't worry. With a bit of luck, you will learn absolutely nothing playing this game. The way it works is that players are going to pick three events from the various categories to make up your Animal Olympics. And then each player is gonna reach into their hand of cards and pick one animal to compete in all three events. And then you're gonna go through each event, one after another, taking turns to describe why your animal is not going to disgrace itself in that event and what advice you're going to give it. Because within Champion of the Wild's paper thin fiction, you're all coaches who have the power to talk to animals. So you might explain that your grasshopper is gonna jump on the back of the cheetah and that's how they're gonna come second in the 400 meter sprint. Suddenly, you've got a table of players arguing whether the physics of that even works, and now you are playing the champion of the wild. You've also been transformed into the cast of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. There, there is no way that a grasshopper can uh, a sit grasshopper on the back of the, just jumps back onto onto the, the, back onto of the, the cheetah, cheetah and then hangs on with his tiny grasshopper hands and he's like, like it's a like tiny jockey. What the hell I is wrong with you? I am talking, talking no about winning the race. Once players are decided or bored, you can take your undecided card and flip it over to ready to vote. And when most players have done that, Everyone has to secretly assign every animal a position in this event. Yes, all right, Brad, the octopus is gonna do best on the mechanical bull, but who's going to do worse? Is it the rabbit or the ibex? Who's worse at hide and seek? Is it the lion or a turtle? Oh, there you are. Oh, we, we were looking for you for ages. I was under that bench for three days. Oh, that's... That's crazy, because we were, we were definitely all looking for you uh, for, for that amount of time. Anyway, uh, well played, uh, and yeah, I'll, I guess I'll see you. Uh, I'll see you. Having been found, the turtle loses hide and seek. The next event will be fast jumping. Oh. Each event card also has specific stipulations if you're a creature flies or a creature that swims about how you can and can't compete, giving you enough concrete boundaries to allow you to dive into a really serious debate about something that fundamentally just doesn't, doesn't matter at all. I will defend till the ends of the earth the wrestling prowess of the squirrel, but we're not going to have an argument about that. We're not going to fall out about that. Making this game 100% holiday safe. If you end up punching your awful uncle, it's not going to be because of a dispute about beavers. There have been all sorts of card games that repeatedly ask which of these two characters would win in a fight. And yes, that is a cheaper alternative than going to watch Marvel movies at the cinema. But Champion of the Wild is the only one of these games that has actually spoken to us, doing so in a confident and relaxed 
baritone. Perhaps because it has two things all the games before it didn't, which is a truly accessible, welcoming whimsy and actual facts. These two things meet at this joyful crossroads where everyone can collectively imagine a green anaconda that's doing its best to demolish a shed. No one is going to feel left out when it comes to discussing animals. Everyone's got some general knowledge about bees or something. And also, crucially, this game understands that for comedy to really work, it can't just be absurd stuff. You have to have the strange and silly alongside the mundane and normal. Yes, you have to have light and shade. You have to have someone picking a horse because they know it's a great all-around animal. But then not reading this event properly, and it's not that the horse has to carry stuff, it's that... I have to carry the horse? You have to carry a horse. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> you've really screwed that up. Well, I mean, it's not ideal, but I could do it. You couldn't carry a horse. I, I, yeah, absolutely. oh right, all right, no, 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 I know absolutely. what you're thinking, but no, 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 not like a full horse, but like a Shetland pony. Yeah, but there I isn't, could... a Shetland pony is a pony. There isn't a Shetland pony equivalent of a horse. There is, it's literally a small horse. While this is something I'd be happy to get out in front of anybody, it's not a perfect box. If you're playing the game with quieter, more shy people, then you might need to moderate the discussions a little bit more to make sure that people aren't just being talked over, because as you've just seen, that might be annoying. Also, whilst it's really cool to know the width of a porcupine, 45 centimeters. Mm. I would have liked to have seen some facts or something, a little, a little fact about each animal, yep, that's just a, a great bit point. of flavor. Yeah, and I think that it's a shame that so much of the comedy in these games comes at the turn of a card, you know, someone revealing that their animal is a falcon. It's a falcon. Or that, you know, you've got your lion ready for the speed event and then it's an egg and spoon race, you know? That's okay. But Champion of the Wild doesn't enjoy that. Instead, because it has all of the events public and then everyone picks one animal for all of them, I can see why they did that because it keeps big pay accounts, you know, running smoothly. But also it means that a good animal is going to have a bad event, which is comedy. But I had quite a bit of fun just sort of coming up with my own rule sets, you know, maybe multiple sets of two events and then everyone has a hand of just three animals and mm. they have to pick out one animal for each. Getting some of that card flipping and getting some of more of that hilarity, extending the game a Well, bit. even that system of having seven cards in hand and then choosing one and discarding the rest. Yeah. I think there's something fun about having to actually kind of keeping a good, solid, reliable animal in hand. And none of like, this is really explored. It's but not. you can explore it yourself because it's a simple enough game that yeah. you can just, it's, we see this as like a toolkit and it's a toolkit we've had just endless fun with. I guess a bit similar to our review of like Flick 'em Up where it's like the actual basic bones of the game are solid, but you just need to do a little bit of a, a little bit of surgery work to get it running smoothly yes. like a robot badger. That's ex not what I was going to say, but sure. Anyway, we enjoyed The Champion of the Wild a lot and we're going to be recommending it alongside other party games we love, like Monica's Metagame, uh, Billionaire Banshee, uh, Codenames, Decrypto, or Fun Employees. I really didn't help with that list at all. <laughs> but I am going to help now because I thought we could end with a special treat. Who would win in a fight between a human and a bear. Bring in the bear! I don't, what is happening? This was not. Oh my God, that's not a bear. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I need to do the YouTube outro, don't I? So just, um, uh, thanks for watching this video on uh, Shut Up and Sit Down. We have other videos that you can enjoy, um, and you can click subscribe, uh, but there's something- ah!